All right, excellent afternoon to all those who are watching us across the state in Nigeria. What we do today remains on the sand of time forever. And how um, a state is governed today by politics and the political um, actors today will stand a reference point for tomorrow's leaders. Again, I say excellent afternoon to all those watching us. Um, you are on to another interesting episode of Real Talk with Of course, I remain your convener, Kike Lomata Lao. And I have the real talkers um, on the show today. Let me start with the woman with the gray who was actually <laughs> winking. She was winking to me, guys, before we came on air. Kike, Hello. Kike, Kike, I like guys. I'm like, you, were the, the, you were the one actually winking, Kike. <laughs> no, but you, you winked first. You were the house husband. Thank you. Yeah. I, would, I, would, I would attempt Thank you. to take no, sides no, no, with no, no, her. No, no, no. That's all good. Black and I yellow. Coca-Cola Fanta. Hello, viewer. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to our lunch hour show. It's a good day to be alive. Join us on this uh, program today. And uh, let's have fun with uh, Ebony and Ivory on the show right now. Hi, Marsh. Hi, how's this been? Coca-Cola and Fanta. Oh, you look nice in your tie. Yeah, don't mind the Lacazaria face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My name is Marshall Anthony, and it's a winky episode because we'll be winking all through. And I want to say welcome to today's episode. Kike, you look beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I couldn't believe that this was court for you. You know, the, <laughs> I would have thought that you'd have dressed down going to court. You you actually know, looks so I needed to appear before. Yes, before appearing. Before appearing. Yeah, so and it, yeah. It Did it work? It, it, it worked. worked. Nice. It worked. Nice. But guys, no. When I'm in doubt, when I don't know what to wear in the morning, <laughs> I put on black. black. <laughs> Guys, uh, today in history, over 6,000 Nigerian citizens uh, were repatriated from mm. Niger, Niger, Niger. Niger Republic in connection with Boko Haram. Let's get full story from our this day industry segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Quickly to the woman with the gray hair who knows the relations that are coming from this <laughs> <laughs> on this day in this segment. Value. So, what <laughs> that take us past? <laughs> you know the relations of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this day in history recorded that um, a certain number of uh, Nigerians from Borno State were repatriated from Niger. We all know where Niger is. Do we? You know. <laughs> Do the, we all know? Yeah, yes, we do. Kike, let's not pretend. We all know where Nijay is. Uh, I mean, uh, our president said his, his first cousins live there. That's why the rail line had to go all the way. So That's they, why the what? The rail line. The rail line from, from, from for Nigeria, train. Yes, for train. will go all the way because of his first cousins there. So it, it's amazing to know that in 2015, the same Nijay that our president has been very kind to, you know, could repatriate Nigerians in their numbers, 6,000 in all, and uh, about 2,400 uh, of them were from Bono State alone. Mm. You know, they said they wanted to carry out uh, military operations, so they didn't want to kill their cousins, you know, in Bono. Marsh. You said it all. <laughs> no, 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 there's nothing to say. There's nothing to say. Ah, really. You are the only one that knows the people <laughs> in the jail. Guys, we've got a quick <laughs> message <laughs> to get a, a word from our sponsor. Stay with us. All right, many thanks for staying with us. On today's show, we are still on politics, and it's because um, whether in Nigeria or in Nigeria at the moment, you know, uh, when I say 
uh, politi uh, the political weather has been on for a while, and it is no news that the APC party has realized close to um, 3 billion naira on the sale of presidential nomination form, and still part of the unfolding political events. I feel the governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, Godwin Emifili, has um, added to Federal High Court in Abuja to seek a constitutional, what I call interpretation of his non-resignation uh, while pursuing his political interests. And according to Sarah reporters that we saw on social media today, the CBN governor had in, in, in several reports been scheming, um, would I say mobilizing funds to fulfill uh, the presidential ambition. However, in section 9 of the <laughs> CBN Act, it's very clear on what is expected of a CBN governor during the, uh, would I say, Dependency, if for, for lack of a better word right now, of his tenure. And the provision states that the governor and the deputy governor shall um, devote um, the all of their time to the service of the bank and also while holding office shall not engage in any form of part-time uh, part employment or vocation, uh, whether, in remuner uh, whether remuner remunerated mm -hmm. or not, Otherwise. not accepted. In whether personal or charitable causes, as may have been determined by the board, which um, do not de distract them, or will I say detract them from their full time duties at the moment. But to discuss this legality and, and the morality of this action, we have a South Nigerian legal attorney who is a public affairs critical and social commentator. Let's get his profile, guys, so I can hold my breath and he can come and. Um, and analyze everything that is going on now in our political arena before he joins us via Zoom. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, many thanks for staying with us. You know, before we usher in our guests, you know, with all that has happened thus far in the political arena, with all the forms that everybody's seen, they've turned the, uh, the most important office in Nigeria as a lottery office. Bazaar. I call it Indomi office. Yeah, so oh, yeah. what to take, uh, um, Marshall, just far? What, what do you think? Is it that they are trying to they have an agenda to stop one person, or what exactly? Or is it that I stand to be corrected? I feel that the North is also trying to cause some, some sort of division with the South and West, and the reason why there seems to be everybody supporting somebody, a group asking them to go and pick one form or the other. What to take? On all of this, all this call it division, shenanigans, call it distraction, call it dichotomy, mm. call it whatever you will. There's a D somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I, I sincerely do hope that that D is not destruction by the North. Before now, Kike, I used to know, but after last night, ask me anything about <laughs> the political landmark. I don't know. You know, the political landscape is really sketchy that I can't really tell what's happening. Before now, there were speculations that, look, these guys are building up funds, stocking up and piling up funds for, to have the strongest, the largest political party in Africa, the, in the APC. And these funds will be put into use in the political run-ins for presidents. But right now, Kike, we can only have discussions and bring out the elements and throw them here and there. So good on that discussion. Let's welcome our guest, uh, Mr. Oshum, Mr. Libros. Oshoma. Sorry, I apologize, Liberos Oshoma, my brother. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Out of many lawyers we have in the country, I feel that a few like yourself lend your voice to sanity and, of course, sanctity of your profession being a lawyer. Again, let me use this opportunity to say, um, on Real Talk with Kike today, we extend our condolences to your loss, your father-in-law. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I have to do this inside the car because I was um, in the church premises trying to arrange uh, who are holding the service of some cities, who was actually arranging chairs, you know, and um, all of that for the event that was planned back for. So my apologies for doing this in the car. Anyway, pay me from All right. Sorry for your loss again. So let's just go straight to the point. You know, Nigerians are amazed and the comments on the social media regarding the CBN governor's action are, uh, well, I say, overwhelming. You know, I want you to 
demystify it for our audience, for those who are listening to us right now. What does San Mike Ezekome, Ezekome see in the BOFIA and CBN Act that Nigerians are not seeing? Because I really do not understand the chances that he thinks that he has um, in court. What's your take on this? Yeah, um, yesterday uh, I had um, a lash out at um, my learned senior SDN, a brother and a mentor, Mike um, Osekome, um, because I was um, quite disappointed that uh, Mike Osekome took that brief. Um, and then I also allowed my sentiments to be better, take the better part of me at the um, I, I, I lashed out at him and even called on the M function him. But in retrospect, um, and after a careful study of um, the uh, 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 court processes, I would say that Michael Zekome uh, was basically doing his job as a lawyer. Uh, because even presently as we speak, there are people who, who, who were arrested for kidnapping even the advance, advance the kidnapper had a defense lawyer. So to that extent, um, I also think, to answer your question now, what I think, you know, lawyers can, um, would always want to test the waters. That's why in court, we'll say there are three sides to every story. Your side, my side, and the side of the judge. You know, so in this case, what um, uh, Michael Zekome has simply done is to take this matter and say, look, this matter, the man is contemplating. With this case, it is obvious that the uh, CBN governor wants to contest for office and at the same time retain his seat. So Michael Zekome is asking the court now, please determine if this man has the right, by virtue of the provisions of the Constitution, and the, the Electoral Act, if he has a right to contest election and still retain his seat. And if he has that right, let no political party restrain him from doing that. But in my opinion, my personal opinion now, I think that if a Mephele, a CBN governor, wants to vie for a political office, the first and honorable thing to do is not to approach the court to ask for interpretation or ask whether he has a right to and why retaining his office. Because morally speaking, let's look at it first and foremost from the moral prison before we look at the CBN Act and then the activities surrounding the CBN itself. Morally speaking, the CBN is supposed to be a financial institution that attends to both the party in power and the party that are not in power. It affects, it attends, uh, uh, what call it, um, uh, attends to both politicians and non politicians. Secondly, by virtue of the sensitive nature of the CBN, by virtue of Section 9, Subsection 3 of the CBN Act, the CBN as a body is supposed to be neutral in all its activities. That is why sensitive election materials are not are kept in the CBN because of its neutrality, and not even in INEC, in CBN, for the, because of its neutrality. So when the materials come from CBN, the political parties will trust the security of those materials, not just because CBN has a vote, but because CBN is presumed to be neutral. When you now have a CBN governor who is partisan, who is contesting election, under a political party. And then also the rule of the political party states that you must have been a member of that political party for a number of years before you are qualified to contest, except you, the, the conditions are waived for you. The CBN governor now wants it to vice for an office. My, my, my opinion is that the court is not the first place to go, but to go home. The first place to go is his house. And then from there, he cannot begin to buy forms and buy um, and, and for public office. Well, uh, uh, Libros, um, give me clarification. I, <clears throat> I really need some clarifications on this. As, um, as, a as a nominee for the position of 
CBN or position of governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, shouldn't one of the elements that would have been uh, considered be that whether he is a card carry member of the ruling political party which might have nominated him, shouldn't that have been a factor or an element that was considered in his nomination? Um, there is no clear court pos pos uh, uh, legal position on that issue that um, for you, unlike, unlike INEC uh, positions, that is clearly stated in the Constitution that he must not be a member of any political party and he must be a member of somebody of integrity and above board. But for the CBN governor, there is uh, no clear court provision in the Constitution or in the CBN Act that anybody that is so nominated does not belong to a political party. But, like I said, Section 93 states clearly that the, the CBN must be neutral. So by extension, what that provision simply means is the fact that you must not belong to a political party, even though it is not clearly stated. So, um, because politicians would ordinarily not want somebody who will interfere in politics to be cleared as a member, as a, a, a governor of the CBN. Secondly, also, this is very, this is also very germane. The fact that if you are a member of a political, we also know that political consideration has to come into play when some of these appointments are made. But what is germane here that if you are a member of a political party, what is the confidence that INEC will have in keeping sensitive materials with you? Would those materials be compromised? So the presumption generally, even though it is not clearly sponsored, the presumption generally is that the CBN, that is why the CBN is even insulated from the interference of the president and the National Assembly. That is why for you to sack a CBN governor, you must, that is one of the offices in, in, in um, uh, one of the executive offices that for you, for a go the president cannot just unilaterally sack without the concurrence of the National Assembly members. All others, their employment is only on based on the concurrence of the National Assembly member, but not for their sack. But you remember the case of uh, Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, the uh, president couldn't sack him. What he simply did was to suspend him until his tenure uh, 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 expired. So all of these are, are, are laws that are in place to ensure, to protect the, the office of the CBN governor and also to insulate his uh, uh, office from politics. So if anybody has intention of playing in the murky waters of politics, the first place, like I said before, the first place to go to it's not so cost, but it's home. All right. Okay, leave us. <laughs> I, I, yes, I can. Um, I'd like to take you back to when um, um, there was this bohaha about the CBN running, uh, the CBN uh, governor, Emefele, running for a second term. To my mind, from what I know in history, as governor. you know, as governor of the CBN. What I know in history, it has never happened in this country that the governor of the CBN runs for two terms. You yeah. are to be corrected. And he's the first person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the first person oh. that is running a, a second term in the office as a CBN governor. If he knew so badly yeah. that he wanted, you know, to become the president of Nigeria in court, then why did he then yeah. want so badly to be reinstated? To run the second term, he just might help. Um, yes, I know, I know. Uh, Masha, to give you that answer, yes. If the CBN, if the CBN, if the CBN governor, if the CBN governor were not interested in retaining office and at the same time uh, vying for the office of the president of Nigeria, he would have. He wouldn't have gone to court. The, what the CBN governor is attempting to do is to use the powers and the paraphernalia of that office to muzzle its way into getting to the number one seat. I think, and I can tell you that the reason for buying for a second term in office was probably to use that office as a springboard to get to the number one seat. If he were not the CBN governor today, I doubt 
if it will be that relevant for the people, for the cabal that are orchestrating its emergence as a candidate in the political uh, in the political party, or those that are orchestrating it, even attempting to swim in the waters of politics. If it were not a CBN governor today, I don't think it would have been that relevant. So remaining a CBN governor made him so relevant. If you remember, uh, there were names of certain cabals that were mentioned last year that were using the CBN governor as a puppet. Even um, if you remember, there were some pictures that surfaced on social media of um, the late um, Issa Funtua also of uh, Issa Funtua where the CBN governor was leaning to discuss with him. And some people concluded, I don't know how true, that these were people who were using him as a puppet. So retaining that seat, despite the role he played, he allegedly played during the 2015 election for the PDP government, all the accusations that were made against PDP government, government and all the money that were allegedly spent. This money actually came from somewhere, from the central bank. But yet, this government was so confident and comfortable to retain him. I think that re the reason for retaining him was so that if, he, if he's still in office, he probably will be very relevant and then they can use the springboard of the office of the CBN to, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, spring him, if uh, permit me to use that word, to the office of the number one citizen. So that's why really all of this is very clear. Now. Like Masha has said, as uh, until yesterday, it became very clear now why the man actually stood for a second term in office. Thanks for all you've shared thus far. I'm talking about... Uh... Uh, being relevant. I know precedence is key in the law. And um, I want to bring us back to our memory lane. I know that um, Ebony State Governor was sacked in March and was reinstated, um, I think, um, shortly after. Yes. And if the CBN Governor is eventually allowed to run for presidency, liberals, what does that portend for the future of politics and public office uh, stewardship in this country? Uh, that will um, destroy the remaining fabric, if any, of the integrity of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, we all know before night there was any institution that still had some form of neutrality, some modicum of respect and neutrality in Nigeria. It was the office of the CBN. Um, I think there have been accusations, counter accusations against INEC, INEC chairman, even resident electoral commissioners, as far as election interference are concerned. You remember the Urubebe saga, um, Jaga, and you know all of that. The CBN, there had never been any accusation against the central bank on compromising electoral materials. The accusation had never been against the police, against INEC officials, and you know, so many other. So if there is any interference, if there is any, if uh, a Mifile is allowed to run for office, still retaining, while retaining his seat as the CBN governor, that will completely destroy the fabrics of the respect that is remaining of that same institution. Mind you, I don't even know why a Mifile is so hell-bent on retaining the seat, why also at the same time, you know, um, uh, delving into politics. He has said in the press statement that he made that if he desires to con contest for office, he will do that you, uh, uh, within the ambit of the constitutional uh, 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 provisions allowed for that. So what is now the, the, the uh, urgency? What is so urgent? Is it that the constitution changed from Friday, between Friday and now? that now he now wants to seek interpretation and wants to remain in office while contesting for the office of the president. It, it's, for me, it's an aberration. He does not even need anybody to interpret law for him. If he's a man of respect and honor, he should, even if people are urging him on, to say, look, you need to remain here. For 35 years of service that he has rendered in the financial sector, I think it should be a man of honor to say that if a, a, a what do you call it, a director under me as an MD of a bank 
if a director under him were doing this, wanted to sit down as a director and yet vie for a governorship, that as an MD of a bank, he would advise the director to resign. Not to talk of a CBN governor. All right. It, it's an liberals, liberals, I apologize for interrupting your line of thought <clears throat> because I will go on a quick break. But I just want to, I want to, I want to bring you up to speed because you are talking about integrity. Because I feel that regulation two of INEC regulations states that um, political parties must not create rules or impose conditions or set high expression of interest or nomination um, fees that could um, exclude um, aspirants. You know, on the basis of sex, uh, religion, ethnicity, um, circumstances of birth or wealth. You know, with what you've shared thus far, you know, how come the INEC is yet to sanction parties over outrageous party uh, nomination funds? For you, it is outrageous. With the number of people that have purchased it, what moral ground would INEC now have to sanction anybody? We're peasants, farmers. Um, uh, Catoreras, these are the ordinary everyday people are buying the form as if it's a, a cup of beans or a cup of gari or a bag of tomatoes in the market. So what moral ground would INEC have now to sanction somebody for a form that is so cheap that farmers can buy, Catoreras can buy, unknown persons can buy. So, and then from the form uh, for female the price is a half the price. And for young people, the price is half the price. So there are basically no discrimination here. So INEC would be going beyond its brief if they now want to sanction people for a form that everybody's buying. And as at the last count, you have, um, for APC, you have uh, close to about 20-something people. And for PDP, more than 10 persons. So the form is so cheap. It is you and I that cannot afford it, that thinks it's expensive. For the people that are buying it, for a, a poor country like Nigeria, that 100 million naira has become, you know, chicken change. INEC would think that the money is, uh, you know, it, it comes cheap like that. So even people listening to us from outside the country will be wondering that 100 million must be that cheap, you know, the way they are picking the forms. Everybody just buying, everybody, including farmers, are buying forms. Liberals, on this platform, we will gather money and get to... Presidential, but we'll go on a quick break. <laughs> we'll go on a quick break. We'll go on a Don't break the wheel. The word from our sponsor. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Glad to know you're still with us. In case you just joined this show, today's conversation is about morality and of course the legality of an aspiration uh when i say aspirant rather you know legally fighting for political office um even when occupying the public face i mean public office is still known that uh, is unconstitutional as as at today and we have an elite and of course a sound lawyer on the show today who has been dissecting the pros and cons of the issue again i say many thanks liberals for all you've shared thus far but quickly let me open our studio line um, for you to be a part of this conversation, remember the studio number to call is 0809887740. showing on your screen right now. And you can also, um, um, and we are also streaming live on um, Silver Bed and Real Talk. We can get platform on Facebook and, of course, on YouTube, on YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube page, rather. Um, Liberos, you know, let me, let me quickly ask you this. Um, even this, this, this sitting... Um, Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar um, Malami, is also trying to contest for governorship in his state, that's Kebi State to be precise, and would then bring sanity to this, to this issue when the apex office of the law in the country is also in the same controversy. What's your take on this? Yeah, um, you know, before now, uh, the Court of Appeal, um, you remember the case of IME had interpreted the rule to mean, the law to mean that um, um, by virtue of Section uh, 130, no, not 137, uh, Section 187 or so, and uh, Section 66, uh, that it is only people who are in the employment of the government of the Federation that should resign at least one month before uh, uh, contesting election. But with the introduction of Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, though which had been suspended pending the decision of the Court of Appeal, it included 
political appointees in the mode of uh, the uh, current attorney general. So that was why you saw the frantic fights by the um, attorney general and some persons in government, like ministers and the rest, because they would want to retain their seats while also contesting for election and using the paraphernalia and the, the spec spoil of office to run for this uh, uh, for election. So, but the National Assembly, in its wisdom, has said no. You cannot be a voting delegate or be voted for if you're a political appointee and you do not resign your office before the primaries. So, until that issue is dealt with, that is why they are still holding on to office because all of them are political appointee. They are not employed in the government of the federation as heard by the Court of Appeal in fire in this case. So, if, but if today the Court of Appeal now decides that that section is not conflicting with provisions of the Constitution. What it means is that all of them must resign their seats. Or if those, if they do not resign before the primaries, it means that APC will not have candidates in such election because the Electoral Act clearly states that if you do not resign, if you will not be a candidate in such election. So, 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 uh... Or Shoma, because uh, I think Ekike has infected me just before the show. She, she almost called you a Shomole uh, when, when you're not contesting for governorship. Uh, Liberal Shoma, uh, I, I want to pick your brains on what you make of the brohaha surrounding Good Luck Jonathan, former president, and uh, whether he, he, he bought the form or someone bought the form for him or a governor bought the form for him, or like you rightly put, peasants and farmers bought the form for him. What do you make of this? The whole drama. Um, uh, Masha, I must um, tell you quite frankly, I have listened to argument uh, oh, that Bullock Jonathan is not uh, constitutionally um, qualified to stand for election, and then uh, uh, I believe that he's qualified to stand for election. The section 137 sub 3 that uh, Femi Falana had um, quoted cannot apply. Retroact uh, retrospectively. It has to apply pre prospectively. But that said, I think that um, President Gulag Jonathan has, um, in the moment he, he, he conducted an election and he handed over after losing that election, he elevated himself to a different realm in Africa where people now see him as, you know, a man who is not power drunk. Who would not hold on to power, you know, against all odds? So, having attained that position, and then also some people also respect him for not unnecessarily interfering in political activities and affairs of the country. Even though some of us have wished that at least once in a while he would, he should make statement. I do not think these are my candid opinion. I do not think that he should, especially. In, on the platform of the political party that almost murdered his reputation, it would be suicidal for him to go back to that vomit and want, him, want to contest election on that platform. Even if he wants to contest election, it should be on the platform of the party that gave him, that made him the good luck that he's known. But I would really, you know, do not believe that... Um, you know, uh, APC should be the best platform for him now. That would be, not only be suicidal politically, that will also mean that the man had no integrity, not one, that he could do anything for power, despite consistently stating that, you know, um, uh, the blood of anybody is not what, you know, power is not what the blood of anybody. I, I do not think that this is the issue. The best thing for him should, he should disappoint everybody and rest, he has attained that level and he should maintain the level. Or otherwise, he will soil his name. Thank you. We're talking about um, the uh, jamboree of um, the uh, nomination fee. Yeah, nomination fee being a, a very cheap, 100 million naira. Don't you think Nigeria is becoming gradually or maybe speedily a land of absurdities as a tease? Because everything that doesn't make sense is beginning to happen in our, in our dear country. So now I am saying that if a mere failure, you know, for 
He's taken into politics now, number one. We know it's not good for the optics. And I think it's a clear disregard for the CBN art. So question now is, how do we, what are we going to do about this one man to start with so that we can save the sanctity around the CBN since that's Send the one. Send him back home. <laughs> Send him back home. Thank you. That's Thank you. That's, Thank you. That's, you. that's the only thing that you can do. Send him home because Thank you. cars were bought, cars were bought with branded cars in the name of a Mefele. He denied the existence of those cars. Uh, he denied that he didn't know anything about it. There was group. There was a group headed by some young people, the same young people who should be vying for the same office. We are brandishing a show, uh, 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 Mefele. The man denied knowledge. People took posters to APC convention in the name of a Mefele. He denied knowledge of it. People bought forms. He denied knowledge of it. Only for him, the very next working day, to go to court and begin to ask court to grant him the power to contest election and remain in office. That man is consistently inconsistent. He should be sent back home. And I do not blame him anyway. I blame the president, person of uh, President Muhammad Buhari that has reduced the bar, has so debased the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that anybody feels that, look, all you need to do now is just, you know, join the bandwagon whether you have delegates or no delegate, How can you? You are not a member of a political party. If you are not mocking, making a mockery of our democracy, you are not a member of a political party, you do not even have delegates, you are a CBN governor, you say you want to contest for, for, for the office of the president on a party that clearly you have stated that you do not belong to. Who does that? Bobby Mumu be that. Uh, <laughs> uh, leave us before I follow your example. <laughs> You know, I can come with you and I understand the yeah. passion right now because we are all in confusion. And this is a man, to so just add to what you just said, this is a man that said he was waiting on God for direction. Mm -hmm. And yet the following morning he still went to court. I don't know in what capacity he thought he could do that. And it's unfortunate as at, that... As at the time he went to court, as at the time he went to court, those processes have been... As at the time he said he was waiting on God, those processes have been fired. The processes were fired on the 5th of, uh, of, uh, of May. And when did he say he was waiting on God? On the sixth. So he probably briefed good. his lawyer even on the first. Mm, absolutely. And liberals, you know, almost all the political aspirants are claiming to have um, sought consent from President Muhammad Buhari from for their ambition because earlier when you were talking about President Muhammad Buhari and all of that, I feel that the standards are truly falling. But why, as the president, as the President Muhammad Buhari himself, why has he not attended to these political shenanigans that uh, are taking place in our country today in terms of our sanity and morality? What do you think is making him um, showing some silence, even though we understand that sometimes uh, for him to even give some breath, uh, press briefing is an issue? But what's your take on this? He said it's not his business. They are raising, they are raising money. They are raising money for the party. You know, it will be difficult for these ministers to come out and say, I donate 100 million to my party. Uh, people will question such donations and ask where is the money coming from. But when you use it to buy forms, presidential nomination forms, PFCC uh, will not look at it. And then Nigerians will discuss the forms rather than where the money is coming from. So I, I think that is for what us, basically is happening. Us, EFCC, yes, yeah, sorry for interrupting your line of thought again. EFCC is saying that it's going to probe and it's going to work closely with INEC in terms of where um, the legality of the funds are coming yes. from. You don't need INEC. You don't need INEC. You don't need a petition. The first thing would be a man. That is why all of them are telling you that this money, these funds were bought for them. Because... If you say that you bought the form with your money, the first thing would be FRO, uh, uh, FROS and um, the state uh, uh, revenue board are going to look at your tax status because for you to buy a form of 100 million, that means you have profit. You've made profit of 100 million. So uh, the, they are going to look at your tax status and how much you have been paying as taxes. So that means you have been shortchanging 
the country. So that's the first big offense. So the way out of it is to say some farmers bought for me, some uh, uh, cattle rearers bought for me, my constituency came together and bought for me. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, real time with bought for me, uh, Masha and uh, Co bought for me, you know, and all of those things. So now, if people are buying from for you, EFCC is just grandstanding. They are just grandstanding, so that we don't say they didn't make a statement. That's why they made that statement. So your the, the, the it, it is easy. This money, where was the money transferred into? You don't need INEC. Somebody paid money into INEC, into a APC account to purchase form. This money, if it is contributions from different accounts, 2,000, 1,000 Naira, you are going to see the inflow. Once you, if that is their work now. EFCC, they are investigating you today. Before they even invite you, they already have your statement of account. So all they need is go to the bank, Bring the statement of account of this person that transferred the money and then see the inflow, whether people truly contributed and how the money were contributed. Thank God we operate, operate a cashless society. But so that we will not say they didn't make statements, that is why they are making statements. Uh, Ahmed Lawa, the Senate president, people are just purchased from for him. Uh, Minister for Petroleum, people purchased from for him. But meanwhile, these same people, when they visit their constituencies, everybody gathered, them, gathered around them to collect from them. But when it is time to pick form, it is these same people that are picking forms for them, these same poor people. So we know if I were the EFCC chairman, I don't need to begin to make statements. I will let my actions speak for me instead of all of this uh, statement. INEC is not the one that they are paying nomination forms money to. The money moved from an account to ito APC accounts. They know APC account number. They have it. Like the Meati Allah's... Uh, 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 as instruction, the bank wrote a letter. It is clear. So, does the FCC need me or INEC chairman or anybody to now begin to investigate uh, to right. know whether how the money Fantastic. went? You don't need it. Fantastic. Liberals, many thanks for all you've shared us. Up. I want you to note today that, you know, on Real Talk with Kike platform, we are going to gather about 100 <laughs> people from Silverbird uh, to, gather, to, to gather for that fund of 100 billion. <laughs> To look for how to um, <laughs> push you to to be one of our presidential aspirants again. <laughs> we have to go now. Okay. Okay. I need it more. Don't waste it. Oh, uh, no problem. Exactly. No problem. Again, we say we are sorry for your loss. But before we let you go, liberals, uh, you. let's discuss some of the trending stories in ten minutes that affect us all, that binds us, that interest us as Nigerians, as uh, Masha will call it. And the first trending story that caught our attention is that of the aviation versus NMP. PC, and that is the operator's um, win fight as NMPC agrees subsidy on fuel for 30, uh, for, uh, for three months. You know, quickly, the woman with the gray hair, let me come to you first. <laughs> What's your take? We're running out of time. They started running commentary. With the ivory. Right okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, why won't the NMPC, you know, uh, come to an agreement saying that um, the Jet A1 will now be sold for 450 uh, Naira per liter or so, you know, I mean, we have the, uh, 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 the primaries coming up. So what do you expect? They're not going to travel by road. The roads are not safe. So the big ones are going to travel by air. So you must make this aviation fuel, you know, available for the use. That's why it's for three months, that window of three months. Then after three months, what happens? Mm. All right. I think uh, with what you've shared right now, I think let me bring us to speed because I know that the aviation fuel price yes. jumping from uh, 190 to 700 yes. uh, per liter shows that there is uh, there is no regulation in the country. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, Barista Leno Yema was on uh, This Day Life on Dr. Ruben Abati's show where he actually dissected or gave us the breakdown of how um, the funds are being shared, you know, mm -hmm. among the fans, you know, you know, taxes mm -hmm. and the likes. And anyone and anybody can just um, uh, rise uh, pr prices of uh, commodities, anyhow, of these expenses when it comes to the consumers. However, if the AON, you know, had not taken a dramatic or will I say drastic step like shutting down um, um, what's it called, the aviation space, do you understand? I'm sure that this 
power-seeking leaders will not bring about a temporary solution to all this mess because they are busy buying 100 million naira form. Um, uh, for, uh, they are very uh, insensitive to a lot of things that is happening around them, especially when it comes to ASU strike as well. Mm -hmm. Look at the ASU issue. Um, people, people like the Minister for Edu Education, uh, what's his name again? Nwa Juba or something like that, you know, is also buying nomination yes, form. However, I also feel that it's, it's a good thing that to note that the deal have been sealed with NNPC supplying jet A1 to marketers, you know, and they've been told that the airline should nominate, uh, that they should be nominated by the airline operators for a period of, you know, three months at 480 per liter, which I feel that is fair to give them some breathing air. At the moment, you know, at just at the moment, but I just feel that pending when the carriers will be granted license to Im import uh, this commodity, when carriers start importing into the country i hope it won't be a case of um okay. explosion but rather than align market forces as in the market as our the market forces to demand and also supply regulation in terms of the prices of aviation fuel and of course we can have a balanced market instead of all the shenanigans that is going on also air is not safe rail line is not safe mm -hmm. airline is not safe <laughs> there are all sort of uh, bad people will say hey, yo, okay, be a yemo. you know yeah. it's just unfortunate that things are just you know, Masha, quickly, what's your take on it before I ask? Uh, I think you and um, FO have said it all. I'd like to hear from our learned friend. Liberals, Liberal, what's your take himself. on this? Very short, please, in one minute. Yeah, <laughs> it is clear. Uh, as we strike, their kids don't attend schools with our kids. They don't attend the same school, so it won't affect them. But if the airline shut down, uh, the roads are not safe. You have bandits, you have kidnappers, you have armed robbers. So which is why they took to the sky. And the sky now is being threatened. They will do anything to ensure that that means of uh, traveling is uh, retained and allowed. Just the same way, this is like into Ebola. When Ebola came, Ebola knew nobody, had no respect for everybody. You saw the way government quickly tackled it. But um, Lassa fever uh, that will, uh, you know, affect poor people, you know, they will rig Maru about it and all of that. So, basically, that's what you see playing out here. Uh, the, the sky is for the big people. So, they will do everything to ensure that they are able to move around with private jets, planes, and the rest. And that's why they quickly had to look for a solution mm -hmm. to it. So, what this means is that ASU also should ensure, or Nigerians should ensure that their children also attend these public schools, so that Anything that affects public school, they will quickly find solution to it. All right. Many thanks for that submission. I'm not sure if we still have a minute or two, uh, Moses, before we go. All right. We have two minutes, like he directed. You know, we have <laughs> the, we have the second trending story that caught our attention is that of also the customs uh, officer that slaps an aide uh, to Delta State mm. Governor. You know, but Masha, let me come to you quickly. What's your take on this? Power drunk officer. <laughs> yes. And... Um, I'm, I, I, I am so appalled by the response of the customs service in that state saying mm -hmm. that uh, they placed them on some kind of um, investigation. Mm -hmm. I thought it, a better response would have been they placed them under suspension or uh, they are facing some punitive measures and not that you have placed them under investigation. You know, it's just power drunk, and I think it applies to several other sectors in Nigeria. All right, many thanks, uh, Marshall. Did you I hear him I, say, I will shoot you? I don't know, you he, he said, I will shoot you. Okay, he, no, he no, point at me. <laughs> no, no, point at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is power play, guys. Like uh, Marshall emphasized, it's power play. Shoot you. <laughs> you don't know. I would shoot you. It's called uniform power. All right. You know that. But guys, but I, like, like Marshall emphasized, this is real. a clear <laughs> case of assault. Let me start from that. And I feel that this is impunity of its highest because how, how dare you slap your fellow man or I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Your fellow citizens and also being in the public sphere, I feel that people lack um, how to conduct themselves or be in charge of their emotions when they're in the public sphere. But it is so dehumanizing if you look at it from the angle of um, emotional intelligence because I just feel that I can't imagine being slapped by one useless power drunk officer. I don't know how I'm going to react. Sometimes I feel people push people to the wall. Mm. Even though there's no violence to you, but the way you're being approached is what is going to bring a reaction from you. And I feel that the custom officers also show that if 
it was not curtailed. Um, you could have fired um, the man, yeah. I don't know, just like Marshall said, pointed at the end, not to me. You know, I just <laughs> feel that that is a, that it's so you. dangerous. It's so dangerous. And I feel that this is the reason why we need to push out the bad eggs that are mm. in, the, uh, in the society. Yes, the bad eggs need, uh, need to be sponged Flushed out, out. Mm. sponged from the system, sponged out of the system. And I feel that, I, li I like how the guy, let's not go back to the guy to right now. No. I like how the we guy composed yes. himself all through, even though I don't know what verbal communication happened mm. between them. I just feel that the exchange between them was unnecessary, but the guy still remained calm. Yeah. Because can we just flip it and just think about it? If he had reacted, maybe just he could maybe. have shut up. Well, and the uniform men, you know, I just feel that they stepped out of line again. I don't know how else to emphasize on it, but the guy, but the, these guys must be brought to books. I just feel that there are too many in the system. Too and the, in the country that we live in today, everybody is just playing power, power tussle. I, I, do you know who I am? I'm the convener of Real Talk with Gigan. Do you know the person that is behind us? Okay. I have an irritant behind me. Yeah. All right, guys, <laughs> that's the first to the end of another Real Talk with Gigan. Indeed, we had an awesome show. And many thanks to our resourceful guests, um, Mr. Liberos, or Showman. Uh, thanks for coming on Real Talk. And again, we say sorry for your loss. But to my co host, many thanks for always lending Thank your you. voice. Thank and you. Try to direct peace in the affairs of our country, but you all have peace in your homes and in your Amen. life. Yeah. And, and this you is where we draw the courses of the show by now. Bye. Bye.